What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're going to go through how I made that survival piston powered engine. Since I did that video, there's been a ton of comments asking me to do a little tutorial on how to actually build that and I know there are much, much better piston engines out there. If you have Scrap Mechanic and you have the Steam Workshop, I encourage you to go check out some of the other engines made by some of the creators on the Steam Workshop. There are some crazy piston engine setups there that I don't even understand myself. Myself. But this one is the one that I made in survival and it's a relatively basic setup So we're gonna run through how to build this how it works in creative and then of course how to actually get this in a Survival vehicle and put it with some wheels. So in case you guys haven't seen that video um, This is the piston powered engine relatively simple You can hold one and it goes in one direction you can hold two and it goes in the other direction The reason I'm doing this in creative is just so we can get a very easy parts list for you guys so to start, you're going to need some sort of a block building material. It doesn't really matter if it's wood or whatever. You're going to need a controller. Now in survival, you'll have to upgrade this controller to level two because you'll need two connections on this controller total. You need five pistons, 10 bearings, two switches, three sensors, and then some various pipe pieces. The toilet doesn't really matter. That's just a seat for us. You don't actually need a seat for this. You can just activate it with the two switches. You can also replace the switches with buttons if you want it to be like a hold to run and let go of it to stop running. Uh, that's fine as well. Now for the sensors, you will need one level two sensor because one sensor has a range of five. The other two have a range of three and one. And for the pistons, you only need to upgrade three of them. Two of them can be base level, level one pistons, but the three that you want driving the piston engine, you might want to upgrade those. All right, so we're just going to start building this right away. So it's pretty simple. We put down a little bit of a wood L first, and we want to have four blocks underneath the top beam. And then we put a bearing down, and then we repeat the same pattern. We go T piece, straight piece, bearing, uh, T piece, straight piece, bearing, and then T piece, and then straight pieces on from this point on. And of course, this is actually where we're going to cap our engine off, but we'll leave that for now. Then on top of each of these T's, we put a little noodle bendy guy, bend corner, and we put a bearing on each of those as well. Then on top of each of these bearings, we're putting our three sensors. And you want them all facing in the exact same direction. This front sensor has a range of one. This middle sensor has a range of three. And the back sensor has a range of five. Now, you're going to want them on button mode. Uh, sound is, you know, really up to you if you want your piston engine to make noise constantly. And color mode, you're going to want off for now. However, I will explain a little bit about why color mode comes into play a little bit later. We'll demo why that's a thing. And then to finish off this, right above the bend pieces on the bottom, you put bend pieces on the top as well, attached to that bar, and you put a bearing on each one of those. Now we just take our pistons, and we put one piston on top of each of the sensors, and it's important to have the piston and the bearing first, because we're going to attach one final bend piece, and you'll see it highlights both of them, so it's going to attach to both of them at the same time. So boom, 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 done. But now finally we can finish it off, put a bearing here, put some more blocks here, and of course weld this all together. And then just to finish it off, we're going to put another frame around the outside here, which you need on both sides. And again, extending out by three. So there we go. And then of course, to get this thing to drive, we put a piston on either side on the inside of this frame, just the basic level ones. And then you stretch three blocks, like a three by one centered block pillar there, you can see on either of these pistons. And these pistons, we're going to want to set to a range of one on either side because we only need them to push in a little bit. Now, on the engine pistons, you want to set them to a range of three, but the speed is really up to, you know, how fast of a piston you can actually get. So as you upgrade your pistons, you should have a range of three, no problem right away, but you'll need to upgrade the speed depending on how you go. I'm just going to set them to half just so that, you know, it's a relatively quick engine. All right, and then we're going to put uh, the rest of the frame on this. So we're just going to put it back on our lift and put some little legs on it so it doesn't, you know, grind on the ground because, of course, the pistons do come down a little bit. So we're going to just frame this up quite nicely, something like that. Perfect. And then we're going to activate the drive system. So we need a controller still. Uh, the controller you can place anywhere. It's not really a big deal. And you want to hook it up to the two middle bearings here. You can see there's a bearing on either end, which we'll eventually have to change. But you want to hook it up to these two middle bearings 
and you want to set them to 120 degrees each. Now, you want to put them on this front section because this is like a default starting angle. These are angles once you've activated a switch, but you only want them on this. And the speed of the controller, it doesn't really matter at all. It's just holding these bearings in place at 120 degrees. And of course, you want to make sure that they're both rotating in the same direction. So this one's 120 degrees, and then this one's also 120 degrees off. Finally, we put our two switches. So we can take two switches here, and we just connect one switch to either of these side pistons. So it'll push that piston in one block, and it pushes that piston in one block. Now we just connect the sensors to each of the pistons directly above them, like so. And that's it. Our entire piston engine is done. So each of these sensors will look forward, and it'll see these wooden blocks when you push them in the way, and that activates the piston in front of it. But of course, once the sensor gets off the wooden block, it stops pushing that particular piston. However, the next piston has already picked up the wooden block and continues the cycle. So now, if we activate one switch, it should spin in the one direction. It's a little bit jerky. We don't really have a lot of weight. You know, I'm going to slow this down just so we can really appreciate the movements. Um, we need a little bit more weight on this engine. It's kind of... The more weight you put on the axle, you have that momentum built up, which helps spin it around. When you don't have any weight on it like this, and the piston engine's just really, really slow, it doesn't have any momentum. It's kind of like the flywheel on a car engine. This is pretty much how it works. You'll notice it's spinning in the one direction. We can turn this switch off, turn on the other switch, and it spins in the opposite direction. And this works quite well. Now, there is one thing I will note, and let's see if we can get it to do it. Here we go. Notice how this engine is kind of jerking. This doesn't happen in survival, but it happens in creative. And I'm not exactly sure why, but in creative, it seems that pistons can actually be picked up by a sensor. But in survival, I haven't noticed that for some reason. So if we take a look, here's our piston. And if we put a sensor right below this, obviously the sensor sees this wooden block, right? But if we now put a switch onto this piston and extend it, you can see the sensor still sees the piston, even though there's no block in the way. Which is kind of weird, because in survival, I haven't noticed this happening at all. And maybe I'll have to go check on my piston car and see if it's not happening. However, there is a really simple solution to this, which it takes a little bit of effort, but it is possible. You upgrade your sensors until they have color mode. And when they have color mode, you turn on color mode and you paint the color, whatever color, white, black, doesn't really matter. But you set them all to a specific color. And once you've set them to a specific color, you then paint the two little three by one pieces the color that you want the sensors to trigger on. Now you'll see all the sort of jerking motion has stopped. The sensors aren't picking up the pistons. But if we turn on these switches, you'll see they still pick up the switches no problem. Now you'll notice for some reason this one sensor is blocking this one. But if we actually speed up this and put a little bit of momentum on it, it'll uh, get through that position no problem relatively quickly there you go you can see so now if we put a little bit of speed on it it just gets right through that little one spot where it's stalled out so again not the best piston engine in the world there are some limitations to piston engines obviously but this one is really really easy to make and it's the reason i made it now of course in survival mode i don't think you have to worry about this color thing i don't have color on my piston engine i don't use color sensors i just use regular sensors and it doesn't have that same issue that we have in the creative mode one that being said if they ever do patch it this is of course the solution uh for the piston engine just you know put a color plate make sure they have enough speed and look at that rotating one direction rotating the other so finally what i'm going to do is show you guys how to hook this up to a car um because i'm sure a lot of you guys you know want to do that as well so the easiest way is to do a direct drive system if you want to do it with a, a gear we can do that as well but to do a direct drive um all we got to do is kind of extend the frame out we delete this frame here and we delete this chunk right here and the bearing off the end of that. And then we just take a wheel, which has to be a large wheel. The small wheel doesn't have enough diameter to, you know, keep these little beams off the ground. And we put the wheel right on the axle and then put the bearing on the end of the wheel. And of course, remake the frame around that. And actually, we don't need any of this frame there. So there we go. So that's one wheel on it. And then to do this other wheel, we repeat the same thing. So we're going to continue this frame up first to make sure that's all connected in one piece, which it is. Now we can delete it on this side and delete this, put another wheel directly here and boom, put a bearing down, extend this frame over, grab that bearing and make sure it's all welded together. Perfect. So there we go. Now we've got the piston engine set up with a wheel and a direct drive system. 
Uh, so if we rotate one direction, the wheels spin, and of course flip it the other direction, the wheels spin. And if we were to, you know, drop this frame out completely, then now we could have our piston engine scoot along the ground on its own. And I don't know if we can catch this, but we're going to find out. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. So that's a really easy way to do it. You can, of course, do it with a gear as well. I found the direct drive gives you a little bit more power. The gear likes to slip. A gear, of course, being made just with one of these pipe cross pieces here and then putting small pipes on all the ends of it. So you could do a gear like this and that's okay, but they do kind of slip. They don't exactly always stay flush together. So a direct drive is probably what I would recommend. I hope this tutorial helped you guys in building a simple piston engine and using it in survival. Like I said, there are some limitations and of course, watch out for this color mode thing. In survival, you shouldn't have any issues, but if you do, you just upgrade your sensors, get them to that color setting, which I think is level five sensors, and then boom, you're done. Easy mode, it all works out great. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.